This is Doomer. If you've been around the internet in the past few years, you've probably seen him in memes or videos. If you're not familiar with the Doomer, maybe you've come across other characters like Boomer, Bloomer, or Zoomer, who also show up in a lot of memes and videos about life and existence overall, related to the struggle of simply being alive. If you don't know who these characters are, you'll learn all about them in a second. Although, we're not here to talk about memes. I'd like to take a look at what these characters mean. Most importantly, why we felt the need to create them, and what their widespread popularity and relatability says about the current state of mind of a lot of people around us. And maybe even ourselves. Today on Cognitive Culture, you'll learn about how to cope with hopelessness, a deep analysis on the doomer. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you see, so I can continue to make these happen. Doomers are normally in their 20s or early 30s, although in the philosophical sense, they could be any age, since we're talking about a mentality that's prevalent to a certain generation but could be adapted by anyone. The Doomer tends to express feelings of despair and hopelessness about their own lives. They often feel as if they've woken up to the knowledge that the world is a cruel, sick, and meaningless place that humans are only capable of destroying the natural world, and that even if doomers could move on past their anxieties about all of this, it would be pointless, as in their opinion, we face a reality of profound meaninglessness. Because of this very limiting but seemingly realistic life view, the doomer often avoids traditional life pursuits that most would find worthwhile. Doomers frequently withdraw from common social activities into even a deeper state of impending doom sometimes only sharing thoughts about how they really feel with other Doomers. The Doomer frequently talks about how much it sucks to work a dead-end job, or how their college education only brought on a significant amount of debt to their lives. Oftentimes, Doomer find it hard to keep or find a genuine romantic relationship, which in combination with everything else leads to the increase of vices like drinking or smoking as soon as the clock strikes 5 p.m. Since most Doomers hate their jobs, they feel like after 5 is the only time of their lives that they really own. Mostly, the weekend. So instead of doing something constructive, it's spent doing as little as possible. Or partaking in activities that are as pleasurable as possible, before yet another dreaded week starts again. Another week full of feeling misunderstood and disconnected from the world at large. The Doomer characters often use all over social media in videos and memes, sometimes making fun of this way of life and sometimes highlighting it, revealing the truest depths of hopelessness and nihilism being experienced by so many. In contrast with the Doomer, we have the Boomer. Just like the Doomer, anyone can have a Boomer kind of mentality, which according to the internet is characterized by a blissful kind of ignorance that allows the Boomer to be optimistic in an unrealistic way. As a complete opposite to the Doomer, the Boomer seems to not be aware of the realities that plague our human condition, and therefore is able to exist in a very blissful kind of ignorance, which irritates the life out of the Doomer. For the Doomer, the Boomer isn't only delusional, but painfully uninformed. What shaped the Doomer's painfully pessimistic outlook wasn't just the incredible increase in access to information, but a decrease in popularity of traditional religions, an increase in societal pressures for higher education, stress, money to be made, and status to be achieved. The combination of all of this with the fact that our source for entertainment and digital social interaction also became the source of our deepest anxieties and insecurities. Social media is full of blurry lines for the Doomer. In it, he or she can share laughs and catch up with friends, but also feel left behind by everyone and everything, while additionally being informed about the deepest issues around the entire world. It isn't that the world is worse now, it's actually never been this good. We're living in unheard of peaceful times, with a massive decrease in the amount of people dying in violent conflict than ever before. Extreme global poverty has been on the decline for a while now, and our general life expectancy is higher than ever before as well. The difference is that while we had the capacity to be informed about important world issues before, resources were limited to the news or the newspaper. Social media changed all that. Now, you can't really run away from finding out about serious global problems, and they're all presented with the same sense of urgency because they're all equally important. But what that does to us as individuals is further paint a picture of how insignificant we are in the face of the devastating world we live in. 
It highlights the fact that we can't do anything about it, and how most of it is, and excuse my French, I really try not to curse on here, but I'm demonetized anyway, so here we go. Shit. A lot of us feel like everything is surely but slowly going to shit. While sometimes experiencing one shitstorm overlap another, like recent civil unrest due to social issues, the pandemic we're somehow still living through, the mass loss of employment across the globe, and the lack of normalcy in our lives, which is all due to the pandemic as well. And the newest addition, seasonal depression, combined with pandemic depression and good old classic depression if you suffer from it as well, without mentioning the other overwhelming daily stressors that we have to go through just to stay alive. I can see how it's easy and almost comforting in a reverse kind of way to end up with a doomer kind of mentality. I think a lot of pressure also comes from the fundamental understanding that things absolutely could be different. We know better. Starving children could be fed. Alternative energy could be used. The rising homelessness issue could be dealt with differently. But nothing is changing. However, pessimism doesn't equal maturity or intelligence. In the same way that optimism doesn't equal immaturity or ignorance. It's basically the mentality that everything is pointless and we're all going to die anyway. Now, let's assume for a moment that this is true. Why does it have to be a bad thing? Nihilism is often associated with German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. For Nietzsche, there's no objective order or structure in the world except what we give it. And I like this, because if we're raw, and honest, mostly with ourselves. The truth is, we don't know if there's an ultimate, grander meaning or purpose to anything at all. We like to come up with ideas and theories about what's going on and some of them make some sense, but ultimately we can't be sure of anything. So if we look at nihilism and the fact that it's a very real possibility that everything means nothing and we examine it like Nietzsche did, we might find a life worth living. Nietzsche talked about how it's the very lack of meaning that gives us the chance to give it whatever meaning we want. I see it as, instead of crying about the glass being empty and withdrawing from life and what it has to offer because it's so depressing that the glass is empty, maybe that's just a chance for us to fill it with whatever we, personally, like to drink the most. This is the kind of mentality that's held by the optimistic Doomer character, Bloomer. In the memes, this character is defined by having the knowledge of the tragic reality of life, but still fights for meaning and is in constant search of purpose, finding value and opportunity in every day while still being aware of how messy things really are. Using that very despair to fuel the pursuit of awe and worthiness that we so desperately need. The realization that life is meaningless shouldn't lead us to become a doomer but allow us to create our own meaning, like the bloomer. Despite the pain, alienation, and loneliness, do something. Discover what actually matters to you and stand up for it. You don't have to march to the beat of everyone else's drum. It might get painfully lonely, and the fear can be surreal. But if you nurture it, you'll find others who share your values, others who see you and are seen by you, even if it seems impossible from where you're at right now. In the words of our friend Nietzsche, to live is to suffer. To survive is to find meaning in the suffering. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments which character you identify the most with. Also, I didn't bring up Zoomer in the video, which is our fourth character in this strange series because the term mainly refers to Gen Z. So far, the memes and the internet culture I've seen being spread around about the Zoomer is more about their abusive use of technology and less to do with a life outlook, so I didn't want to include them in this video. Although I did find that a lot of Gen Z is divided, and some of them have more of a Doomer mentality, while others identify a lot more with the Bloomer. So, there's that. I want to hear from people of all generations in the comments, what do you think of this weird meme umbrella that we developed to kind of have an existential crisis and make fun of it, but also suffer and share memes? I think it's really interesting, which is why I made a video on it, but I'd love to hear from you.
If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss my future uploads. And if you would like to support me so I can continue to make more videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My channel is not monetized on YouTube because they don't really like the topics I talk about, so your contributions on Patreon are literally what keeps my channel going. To visit my Patreon, click on the link on the top right of the screen or go to patreon.com forward slash cognitive culture. You can also click on the orange button that'll show up in the middle of the screen at the very end of this video. Here's an incredibly special thanks to my Patreon. Thanks to you, I've been able to get by this week. Mike, Robbie, Jenny, Gabriel, Nadia, Edwin, Johnny, Chris, Elizabeth, Elvis, Rosie, Peter, Mark, Peter Lawrence, and everyone else that's contributed to other packages. You can find your names in the description of this video. Cheers.